It is my pleasure to welcome you to uh, a new chapter in the evidence-based labor management uh, series at the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Maternal Field of Medicine, Edge of MFM, The Pink uh, Journal. Uh, today's uh, video will be on induction of labor, and this is just part two, again, or, of our evidence-based labor and cesarean management. So there are many uh, benefits uh, for induction uh, for different indications, as you can see in this and next uh, slides. Uh, you can see gestational age from 31 to 39 weeks. Most indications are for term induction. In particular, if you are 39 weeks um, of uh, gestation, there are maternal and uh, perinatal benefits for induction at that time. If there are medical conditions, such as chronic hypertension, uh, preeclampsia, uh, diabetes, um, there is indication for um, induction, um, as well as prior stillbirth, and other indications listed here, intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy, uh, pre pre-labor, premature rupture of membrane, intrauterine growth restriction, and different kinds of twins. And as you can see, again, most of these are indications for term induction, but for some more severe um, indications, uh, late preterm or even early preterm inductions are indicated and beneficial for the mother and or the baby. There used to be uh, taught in literature about an association between induction and cesarean delivery, but in fact uh, now dozens of randomized studies have shown that induction is associated, if anything, with a decrease in cesarean delivery compared to expectant management, which is good news for um, induction in general. Once uh, the patient agrees to an induction and uh, is consented, uh, we suggest double agent for induction with uh, a 60 to 80 uh, ml single balloon um, Foley uh, kept in for uh, usually 12 hours or till it comes out. In addition to the balloon, the second agent can be either misoprostol or oxytocin. If it's misoprostol, as you can see, the dosage is 25 micrograms um, by mouth, followed by 25 micrograms repeated every two to four hours, which is our recommended dose, or 50 micrograms every four to six hours. If misoprostol is not available or contraindicated, like for somebody with a prior C-section, then oxytocin infusion is recommended together with the single balloon foley. Membrane stripping uh, can also be added at the beginning of induction um, as this uh, shortens uh, labor and the time um, to delivery. In addition, once you get to active labor, which was usually defined in this randomized control trials and a meta-analysis of the randomized control trials as a cervical dilatation of about five to six centimeters, if there are adequate contractions, uh, you can consider stopping oxytocin since uh, the incidence of vaginal delivery um, is the same, uh, but the incidence of a possible C-section for non reassuring field testing and in particular, uterine tachycystole is decreased. In terms of pre-labor premature rupture membrane, especially when it happens at 37 weeks um, or more, but even if you decide to induce somebody with rupture membrane after 34 weeks, the best agent is oxytocin, and the timing of oxytocin should really be as soon as feasible, uh, immediately, really, after the rupture membrane, uh, as confirmed by several randomized trials, um, certainly within 12 hours of rupture membrane, oxytocin should be started to decrease in particular maternal um, and um, perinatal infections. Induction can also be performed in low-risk women outpatient. In this particular case, uh, I would suggest, uh, and the evidence from randomized studies uh, is for using the balloon, the Foley outpatient as a single agent for outpatient uh, ripening. And uh, once you start induction, you have to be patient. Uh, the best evidence-based uh, recommendations for uh, the diagnosis of failed induction um, is to wait uh, over 15 hours, uh, even better, over 18 to 24 hours after both uh, oxytocin um, and uh, rupture of membrane. So rupture membrane and oxytocin, once they happen, that's when they start the, the clock starts and um, 
only 15 to 18 to 24 hours after that failed induction can really be called. These are the evidence-based uh, labor management uh, recommendations and counseling for induction of labor based on randomized trials and meta-analysis of randomized trials, so the best level one evidence. Uh, we thank you to have listened to this uh, chapter on our series. Um, we covered already before labor, this is induction of labor, and we look forward to the next um, chapters, uh, the next one in particular, the first stage uh, for labor management. Thank you again for supporting and for your interest in HOGMFM, the Pink Journal. I'm Vincenzo Berghella. Have a great day.